You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hello, and welcome to Working Like Dogs on Pet Life Radio. Thank you for joining us today. We're your hosts. My name is Marcy Davis, and my co-host is my trusty assistance dog, Whistle. And Whistle and I are thrilled to be with you today to talk about our favorite subject, working dogs and working animals. And today, our guest is Karen Pryor. And Karen is a behavioral biologist with an international reputation in marine mammal biology and behavioral psychology. And also, she is the founder and leading proponent of clicker training, which is the worldwide movement involving new ways to communicate positively with animals. So we have a whole lot of things we want to talk to Karen about today. We're so excited that she can be with us. So come right back after these quick messages from our sponsors as we welcome Karen Pryor to the show. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Buster, you're telling me my dog food products can't go on your shelves? That's right. Didn't pass one of my Petco certified nutrition checklists. Sorry, Wayne. Who made these checklists? Geniuses. Very smart guys. Well, it's good enough for most grocery stores. Do you see cheese puffs on my shelves? Mayonnaise? Soda pop? No. That's because I ain't running no grocery store, Wayne. Your pets will get better nutrition. I guarantee it. Petco, with healthy pets go. Enter the code WORK10, W-O-R-K, the number 10, and get 10% off any order. No minimum at Petco.com. Whether they're big, small, hairy, or whatever, you're going to need gear for your feet. And Kids Foot Locker's got all the great shoes and gear that'll get you in the game. Go to kidsfootlocker.com. Enter the code AFWRK1KF to get 10% off any order of $50 or more. Or enter the code AFWRK2KF to get 15% off any order of $75 or more at kidsfootlocker.com. And cover those funky feet. Would you like your business to reach out and invite in our audience? We have a brand new trademark concept called Info Seeds. Info Seeds are short 20 second seeds of information about your place of business, practice, or service. Is the best, most cost effective way to invite us in. We only have a limited number of slots left. For more information, visit the website petliferadio.com. Click on sponsorship information. There you can listen to a sample of Info Seed. Remember, only a limited number of opportunities are available. Welcome to Sassy Seniors, a show about our fabulous older dogs and cats. I'm your host, Kelly Jackson. You know, I wanted to create a show to really showcase our senior pets. And you know, as the human population ages and lives longer, of course, so are our wonderful pets. But many of us with aging pets, it's so interesting. We have a tough time realizing or really admitting that they are seniors. So in a way, I kind of like to think of our senior pets as, as wise puppies. What do you think about that? Be sure to join us for another edition of Sassy Seniors. And remember, celebrate your senior pets. Every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Hello and welcome back to Working Like Dogs on Pet Life Radio. Today our guest is Karen Pryor. Hello, Karen, and welcome. Well, hello, Marcy, and thank you so much for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. Well, we're so excited that you can be here. I, I've heard of you for so long from Whistle's trainer, Danny Weinberg, here in New Mexico, has spoken so highly of you and your training. So I'm so excited to, to finally get to visit with you. Well, thank you. Danny is a wonderful teacher. I'm so glad you have her. She's a psychologist in her own right. She's an expert on clicker training, so I'll bet you have clickers in the house for whistles <laughs> when you want to teach her something new. 
Well, and, yes, uh, yes, 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 Danny. I was mesmerized the first time I saw Danny use the clicker training technique um, when she did it with my. She's actually worked with two of my assistance dogs. Morgan was the first time I saw her do that, and it was just mesmerizing the way he focused on her and the way he responded to that technique. It really, the dogs understand it right away. The people take a little longer, but the dogs get it. Oh, you mean I hear that? You'll pay me, and I can make you make that noise. I can make that noise happen. All I have to do is, like, sit, you mean, or pay attention to you, and you do that. Ah, this is super. Now I'm training you. You know, they really, they get it. I'm joking a little bit. Uh, There are some neuroscience reasons why this approach works better than talking to the dogs all the time and giving them orders, but uh, it's also kind of thrilling, don't you think, to see how they love it. It was. I was just blown away by it. And I guess we should really tell our listeners, what is clicker training? Clicker training is slang for a technique that's been around since the 60s. It really is not conventional training at all. Instead of trying to make the dog respect us and be obedient to us or the other, any other animal, we and take commands. You know, that's sort of the old-fashioned way. That's based on the way we train people, exactly. Instead of that, we're tapping into the animal's innate, given, genetic ability to explore the universe, explore his environment, and find out what works for him. Animals do this by nature. They want to find out what's good. They're not just trying to avoid what's bad. They particularly want to find out what's going on out there and what's good. And the click, this little mechanical signal, tells them, aha, that worked. What I did, when I heard the click, that worked. That opened the candy box. That showed me the path. That, that's a good thing to remember. What I was doing when I heard the click. Our brains are designed to learn this way from cues in the environment. So the click, we're tapping into that natural ability. And what we do is is to watch the dog and click for little teeny behaviors that we like. We have a plan. We want this dog to, I don't know, pull or do complicated things like a seeing eye dog but we're st- or your assistance dog. But we start with something the dog's already good at and is likely to do naturally. And we pay him for that. We let him know that that works. And right away in the first two or three minutes, the dog is going, well, that worked. I wonder what else works. So that you're communicating on an entirely different level. What you have to do is plan ahead, break the behavior down into little pieces. All the dog has to do is keep trying to find new ways to make you click. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I know. And I'm so glad you said that all you have to do is because when I got my uh, first assistance dog, you know, I had never been exposed really to dogs before. I mean, we'd always had a family dog, but we were not educated about how to train a dog or how to really care for a dog. And that's something that I've had to learn over the years after getting my first assistance dog so many years ago. So how would you recommend if someone is just getting their first working dog? Because you know, Karen, it's so interesting. We get these, I talk about Whistle as, Whistle is like an Olympic athlete. He is so fine-tuned, so at the top of his game, you know, Uh and when you get a dog like that and you're an inexperienced person like I was, what would you recommend for someone to start learning about clicker training and how to use that with their dog? You know, the material out there has been growing and changing very rapidly. And sometimes I'm hesitating because some people are getting assistance dogs that are already clicker trained. And usually that will come with a lesson on how it works and you'll learn. You'll learn how to communicate what the dog's already learned and right away you will also learn how to teach the dog yourself little things like open the fridge or find the crosswalk button. You know, I mean, you'll be able to teach the dog yourself because it's it's that kind of thing. If you're getting a dog that is conventionally trained, I'm sure that they will give you all the trained signals and instructions about correcting it for mistakes and so forth. And even then, it's an awful lot to learn from scratch. Both ways, there's a certain amount of learning. I think one of the things to do is go on the Internet. You can go to clickertraining.com and order a beginner kit and just work your way through the exercises in the kit. Work your way through some basic little things, little things that don't mean anything that are not vital for the dog's work, but that will teach both you and the dog the game. Little things like 
Uh, give me a high five. You know, your dog doesn't need to know that. But in learning the steps to do that and how to use the clicker and how many treats to give and how small they have to be, they don't need to be big, just tiny little, you know, piece of cheese or something, you and the dog will figure out the game. And then when you've practiced the game on simple little things, then you'll both know how to go forward with it. For some people, it helps a lot to see visually, you know? And honestly, we have, well, we, clickertraining.com, there will be all kinds of DVDs and uh, CDs like Clicker Puppy that can help you work through it. And I wouldn't sneer at YouTube. If you go to YouTube and click the uh, search for Clicker Training, there are jillions of videos about how to use the clicker to stop a dog from jumping or use the clicker to teach your dog to pick up the car keys or use the clicker to uh, whatever, from problem solving to all kinds of little things. You can look at some of those. Look at the short ones. They're two, three minutes long and see how other people are doing it. You can see different ways other people are doing it. That's a good way to learn too. Yeah, that's great because so many people, so many of our listeners, I know I get um, calls and emails from them that they're self-training their own assistance dogs. And so I think yeah. that's such great information that you just shared. And your book, Reaching the Animal Mind, is such a great, great read for people and how to work with, like you mentioned, cues and, and some of all those, those other things, the reinforcers. And I just really enjoyed reading a lot of the information that you had in there, even though I've had an assistance dog now for 20 years, but it was so helpful to me to read that and to hear, you know, other experiences and, and how to deal with desired behaviors and undesired behaviors. Oh, thank you, Marcy. That, that, I had a lot of fun writing that book because I don't know if you know, but well, you do now because you read the book, but I started out as a dolphin trainer. Yes. And that's really where I learned this technology. It was many years ago, but the technology was strictly laboratory science then. I think the dolphins were the ones that first opened the door to it. And so in the course of working with dogs over the last 15 or 20 years, I've piled up an awful lot of good stories. And so that book was kind of the excuse to unload that great story about the elephant or that great story about yes. the horse that could open its own gates or whatever, um, yes. all in the in also trying to somewhat convey the current state of, of uh, this kind of training, of, of marker-based or operant training. So, so good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Another thing you can do is that, that what we clicker trainers have arrived at is we do a conference twice a year called Clicker Expo, and many people with assistance dogs come to that conference to take their skills to an even higher level, especially people who are teaching other people. Uh, but the, those of us who have been teaching for almost 10 years at Clicker Expo now, we've kind of come to an understanding of what good clicker training is and what it isn't. And I wish there were some technical name for it. This is kind of the only name. This is the name that's caught on. So even though you might not be using a clicker, it's the same principles. So for the last three years, we've been training trainers to be good teachers of clicker training through a program that we call the Karen Pryor Academy, which is on the Internet, KarenPryorAcademy.com. And we've got 300 certified teachers out there around the U.S. and Canada and some in other countries now. So you could find a teacher in your area that could serve as your coach. You might be able to find a good teacher like that by going to findagreattrainer.com and looking at the map of certified clicker trainers who are out there and ready not only to tell the dog to teach the dog, they know how to do that, but to teach you with the same positive reinforcement, chocolates if necessary, whatever, <laughs> uh, how to do this without panicking and uh, struggling with it. It should be easy, it should be fun, but of course, not everything always is, so a teacher is the, the ultimate solution to learning it. That's great. That's wonderful that you offer that. And tell, um, tell us about the Clicker Expo. When do you offer those? You said twice a year, and where are they? How could people get involved in that and attend? ClickerExpo.com is the site. We are just closing in. We've just had the 2011 
clicker expos. They're in different cities each year. We do try to move them around. And next year in, let's see, January will be uh, Portland, Oregon. We always give it in January and usually in the last weekend or next to last weekend. So January is Portland, Oregon. I think it's the next to the last weekend. And March, we have not signed the contract yet, but it will be somewhere in the in the eastern states, probably in the mid-Atlantic states. And okay. uh, that will be at the end of March. Oh, great. So, yeah, so people from different parts of the country hopefully will be able to attend one of those. And, and how long do they last, Karen? They're three days and three nights. And that uh, in the course of the days, you have a program starting at 8 in the morning and going into through the evening and five programs at once all day, every day. That's so we can handle complete beginners and people from outside the field. For example, we get sports coaches, we get uh, school teachers, we get uh, people who work with children with autism. So there's a wide range of applications. So we try to serve everybody. And we also try to make sure that every minute of every day is fun. I like to make sure that all our presenters are entertaining as well as as really of course they know their stuff but no droners allowed it has to be it has to be exciting and reinforcing <laughs> for you. <laughs> oh that sounds great for both the human and the canine that sounds awesome. Well I loved the photo that you have on the cover of Reaching the Animal Mind because that dog looks so happy and is smiling and I love that which really portrays and demonstrates the whole the whole idea of clicker training and how it should be fun. It does. And also the dog you notice is looking right at you with a light in its eye. Yes. Uh, that's, it's really true. Your, this approach kind of wakes up the animal's intelligence. That's sometimes the first thing pet owners say. Mm-hmm. Oh, my dog is stubborn. Oh, my dog doesn't listen to me. Oh, this dog is dumb as a rock. You know, you hear those things. And then they start clicker training, and if the dog learns in three clicks that you want him to sit, and he learns in five clicks that when he hears his name, he should come running. People say, oh, I didn't know he was so smart. I love these. <laughs> this dog is so smart. But that's because you, you turned the light on. Right. Well, you, I get that because I saw it. I saw that light come on for both of my assistance dogs. When, when Danny did that with Morgan, I was like, who is this dog? Because Tell me, what did she do? What was the behavior that turned him on? Well, she was just, she just started with the clicking. You know, Danny did not train Morgan. Morgan was actually at the Pause with the Cause facility back in Michigan, but uh-huh. he was clicker trained there. And mm-hmm. so Danny is my field trainer. So mm-hmm. she's actually the trainer that comes to my home and works with me whenever I have an issue and works with us through the certification process. So she came initially, she delivered, um, she's delivered both of my dogs to me and she delivered Morgan. And Morgan Morgan was having a couple of issues where he really was having a fear of his crate. Oh. And and we feel like he had a bad experience on the flight to New Mexico. Could be. Sure. Yeah, and so Danny was working with him and trying to get him back into u- using his crate. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, watching her do that, uh, you know, I had never seen the clicker process. My first dog, I don't believe, was clicker trained. Mm-hmm. But Morgan, I mean, he lit up like a light bulb. I mean, it was like he was so excited and he responded so positively to that. And then Whistle also had a fear issue as well. And Danny used that in, in working with him. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, and it worked. And quickly. Yeah, I, I think... The, I think that it helps clarify what's going on for the dogs. Like, oh, I get it. Oh, all right. I don't need to worry about that. Anymore. Exactly. That was yeah. it. It was the relief yeah. of the worry. Yeah. I think that was that was so vital to them. That's a blessing yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we're going to take just a quick break, and we're going to come back and keep talking with Karen about these wonderful training techniques and her experiences. So. We've got some great messages from our sponsors. We love them so much, and we hope you'll come right back. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. 
Love your pets but wish their medications were a lot less expensive? They are at 1-800-PET-MEDS. You'll not only save on flea and heartworm medications, but on prescriptions for arthritis, incontinence, thyroid, and more. And you get fast service, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Plus, our licensed pharmacists ensure accuracy, monitor drug interaction, and more. See why over 5 million people have trusted their pet's health to 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Call now or order online. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash work, W-O-R-K, to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more at PetMeds.com. I play tennis because I love to, but inside, I want to win. Take away the court, the net, I might not be a player, but I'll always be a competitor. Lady Foot Locker understands that. Lady Foot Locker, the first to carry Adidas off-court shoes and the gear that goes with them. If you play your best, there's no regret. Lady Foot Locker, one place, every woman. Go to LadyFootLocker.com and enter the code AFWRK1LF to get 10% off any order of $50 or more. Or enter the code AFWRK2LF to get 15% off any order of $75 or more at LadyFootLocker.com. FTD's network of over 40,000 florists around the world have been creating beautiful handcrafted arrangements for 100 years. Each arrangement is delivered the same day and backed by FTD's 7-day satisfaction guarantee. For a century, people have trusted their most important occasions to the flower experts at FTD. Since Pet Life Radio is all about puppy dogs and flowers, our listeners, that's you, can get a 20% discount on your order. Just go to florop.com and use the code WORK1234 at checkout. F-L-E-U-R-O-P dot com, code word W-O-R-K-1234. Hi, I'm Angelina. Join me for some great training tips to live a happy, healthy, peaceful life together with your best friend. And by the way, they're not the only ones that learn something new. Join me for Teacher's Pet on Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Working Like Dogs on Pet Life Radio. And we're visiting today with Karen Pryor. And Karen is sharing all of her valuable information about clicker training and other techniques of working with dogs and about your new book, Reaching the Animal Mind. And as you mentioned earlier, that this book gave you the opportunity to share lots of stories. And I certainly enjoyed reading them. And I was hoping you would share with our listeners, Karen, about the most memorable conversation you've ever had with an animal so far. Oh, so far. Well, we do have... Quick training is a two-way street. It's not me making you do something and you doing it. That's a one-way street. Clicker training is some sort of like, here's an opportunity to do X. Oh, good, I'll do that. How about Y? Would you like Y? I mean, the animal is asking you questions back. So let me tell you about the, my first encounter with an elephant. Would you like to hear the elephant story? That sounds that awesome. One? Love well, elephants. <laughs> I had no particular, you know, dolphin training, we train so many animals. So after dolphins, we always get a lot of people work in zoos and they work with many zoo animals. So we're always interested in a new species that we haven't trained before. Uh, this was some years ago. I was consulting to the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., and I was teaching a group of keepers how to clicker train. Uh, actually, we were using a whistle then. That was before the clicker came on the scene. But the same principles, mark the behavior, pay for the behavior. Every mark, every sound, is it's a promise I'm going to pay you. And uh, the one group of trainers they already had in the zoo were the elephant trainers. And they were conventional trainers. That is, they trained with dominance and the threat of punishment if necessary and social relationship with the animal, that the animal sort of knows your boss but learns to trust you and so forth. And the elephants were handled entirely in that traditional way. So the elephant trainers 
by and large, stayed out of my eating. I had bird trainers and, and I had a lot of other keepers with interesting animals. But one of the elephant trainers was an older man named Jim who came to every meeting. And one day I was walking and I left the elephant trainers alone. I mean, I figured it wasn't my business to go in and tell them, you're doing it all wrong, let me show you how to do it. No, 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 they, they didn't want to hear that. That's not good clicker training in the first place. Uh, so I had not been in the elephant house, and Jim stopped me on the path and said, uh, would I like to see what he had done with his elephant, with the, with the whistle, with the, with the same reinforcement training? I said, sure. He said, nobody else was there today. He was alone in the elephant house, so nobody would mind. So we went to the elephant house, and, and he showed me his, the big female African elephant. He had trained her to lie on her side for a whistle and a mango. And sure enough, she lay right down and she ate her mango. It was very sweet. It was a little hard for her, a lot of work to get a big elephant down on the side, but she did it. And then he said, would I like to try with one of the young elephants? It was a a young female, half-grown, half-size elephant named Shanti. And I said, I would love to. So he fixed up a bowl of cut up uh, apples and uh, sweet potatoes and, I don't know, regular potatoes, something else. And... We went to over to see Shanti, and I toot, gave her a toot of the whistle and a piece of food. Well, she had that figured out right away. Uh, he brought me um, a baseball, plastic baseball bat, a toy for the elephant. So I gave her the toy. I threw the toy into the thing, into her cage. And she went and got it and brought it back. I thought she probably knew how to do that. So I gave her a whistle, and I took it back, and I gave her a treat. And then I threw it again, and she went and got it. But this time... She held it just a little bit out of my reach, so I had to reach in to the cage. So I took it, I whistled, I took it, and I treated her. But that's a game that can lead to trouble, you know? She's got my whole arm on her side of the bars. I didn't want to do that any further. So the next time she came, she held it even further inside, and I didn't give her a whistle. I didn't give her anything. Just waited. She dropped the bat. Jim gave her a Frisbee. He had a Frisbee. She made noise with the Frisbee. I paid her for that. I didn't ask her to retrieve it to me. And so, you know, I found out she could make noise two ways. She could rattle it down the bars, and she could rub it on the floor. Well, this elephant is full of fun, you know. This elephant, this is good. This young elephant is playing games with the Frisbee here. I like that. And then this time, so I paid her for that, right? Whistle, and I held out the food. But this time, I held out a piece of apple. She reached it with her trunk. And she made eye contact. She fixed my eye with her. She had this merry little eye. She fixed it with this sort of laughing eye. And she felt around in my hand as if she couldn't figure out how to pick the thing up. Feel, 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 but she didn't pick it up. So I thought, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. What's she doing? And then I thought, maybe she doesn't like apples. I put the apple back and I gave her a piece of sweet potato. She took that right away. So the next time I tried again with the apple and again, feel, feel, feel. And again, I gave her the sweet potato and she took it right away. And you could almost see her laughing. Uh huh. She's trained me to <laughs> give her sweet right. potatoes. Yes, yes. yes. So I thought, that's okay. You know, honey, whatever you like, I'll pay you what you like. I'll go along with that, you know, for now. Tomorrow it might be apples anyway. Who knows? So, yeah, I thought that was sort of sweet and very smart of her. And then you know what she did? She walked away from me over to the side of her cage. The cage had a front wall and it had a side wall and then it had a big door to the outside. But the side wall cage, part of the cage, had a door in it also, which was padlocked because the keepers went in and out that way. So she's reaching through the bars and fiddling around with her trunk the way she had been fiddling around in my hand. And Jim and I looked at each other, and I said, what's she doing? He said, I don't know. So we walked over and went around the corner, and we looked. You know what she was doing? She was fiddling with the padlock and fixing me again with that penetrating eye. Mm -hmm. How about this? You know, if you're so good about the sweet potatoes, maybe I can train this lady. (laughs) She's so trainable. Maybe I can train her to open the door, unlock the padlock, and let me out here. Yep. Oh. Yep. It's amazing. But depressing, too, you yeah, know? Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. she was young and she was bored, and, and I thought it was very clever of her, but I also thought, my goodness, if you're taking care of elephants, you really want to be thinking hard to be one step ahead of them, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. So they probably out thank you all the time. What we did was we ended the session right there, and I gave her a whole handful of sweet potatoes on the floor, and she was eating those. And Jim went and opened the outdoors, and she went running out into her yard with her ears flying on both sides and scared up about 200 pigeons who were picking up grain on her. <laughs> she went out and chased all the pigeons into the air on purpose, of course. And I thought, wow, you know, what a wonderful animal, but, but how poignant yeah, that she yeah. has, has so little to do with that wonderful mind. Yes, yes, I know. And that's also how I feel about my assistance dogs, that they are so smart and so engaged that I don't want to waste a second of that. And I, I uh-huh. really feel that with Whistle because he, he does, he gets so bored. I mean, he looks at me like, really, you just want me to pick this up? You know, it's like uh-huh. I could do this in my sleep, you know, because they're just so intelligent. So how do you recognize behavioral messages from dogs, Karen? What would you recommend? You know, their faces are really very expressive. And we have been taught that, Guessing what they are feeling is anthropomorphism and is a big no-no. I think that's a sin in a way. I think it's just as as much of a sin as being too anthropomorphic and thinking you know what they're thinking when you don't. You see what I mean? We've been trained in school and our whole culture for 30 years and 40, 50 science has said animals don't have feelings, animals don't think. Well, we know better now, but it takes a while for the pendulum to swing. So one end of it is people saying, oh, my dog reads my thoughts. She knows every word I say. That's overdoing it. Yeah. People also, they'll look at the dog. They'll come home. There's a torn up pillow. The dog is looking embarrassed and they say, oh, he's ashamed. He knows he did that. He feels guilty. Again, it's over interpreting. That's what a human might be feeling. But right. all the dog is really feeling is dismay that you're angry at him. Exactly. <laughs> and so he's throwing at you all of his, don't hit me, I'm only a yeah. baby behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Sad looks, duck yes. head, crouching, yes. tuck tail, grinning sometimes, you know, an embarrassed mm-hmm. grin. That's a pacification <laughs> signal. You know, that's a signal of fear. So, so part of it is getting a little bit educated about what dog emotions really are are and what they mean and what the signals that they give mean. There's a lot of good books out about that. And another part is somewhat trusting your judgment. When the dog is bored, he looks bored. When the dog is frightened, you know, you'll see Patricia McConnell has a nice book about this, The Other End of the Leash, showing the kinds of expressions that can be meaningful to you, that can postures, that can tell you, my dog is stressed. You know, we don't recognize the stress signals. We don't recognize the way the lips pull back when the mm-hmm. dog is nervous. The white of the eye shows. That tells you right away. If you can see the white of the eye, the dog is looking out sideways, so you see the white. The yes. dog would wishes whatever's going on would stop. Would stop, yeah. That is one of the most important things that I have to be aware of with my assistance uh-huh. dog is that stress. It's uh-huh. when, when they're getting that. And another indicator that I've noticed on Whistle is that he gets a little wrinkling on the side of his, the way he holds his mouth on his uh-huh. muzzle, it gets a little wrinkled. And that's a big indicator to me that he's stressed and I need to be paying attention to what's stressing him and make sure that we can get out of that situation. Exactly. That's wonderful. How observant of you. It's sort of as if he's gritting his teeth. Ugh. Yes. I don't know what to do about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, a good owner, I think it's a wonderful thing to develop that skill. I think it's marvelous because, oh, uh, you see it in photographs where there's a three-year-old hugging a St. Bernard, and the St. Bernard's eyes are showing the whites. Yeah. And you think, you know, the St. Bernard is tolerating this, but he doesn't like it. Right. Take right. the kid away. <laughs> yeah, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. comfortable. He's fearful. And people often fail to notice those feelings. They say, oh, the dog bit without any warning. Oh, no, there were plenty of warnings. You just didn't see them. Right, right. You just you know, weren't aware. So, yeah. So that, yeah, and if you can see when your dog could use a little fun in his life, that's even wonderful. That's wonderful, too. There are a lot of little clicker games you can play. Even when you're just in the house in front of the TV, we play little games like um, hide a penny or hide, hide something under a <laughs> pillow and ask the dog to find it by scent just for fun and then click and treat. Or uh, teach the dog to cross his paws. That's a fun one. So cute. 
Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You know, these little things, uh, they're, they're um, I think, a good place to go, I think, is the library at clickertraining.com. There's just a huge library there. And uh, look for uh, clicker games that you can play with your dog. Just to pass yeah. the time, you can play them in the waiting room of the veterinaries, you know? Yeah, uh, that's play a great them idea. You, yeah. I, I know. Well, even, you know, these working dogs, I know Whistle does get bored, and I do have to stop because I work at home, and I work a lot. And so oh, I have yeah. to stop and make sure that he's getting that stimulation because he'll get so frustrated with me, and he gets so bored laying under my desk. <laughs> of course. Of yeah. course. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, you know, and, and sometimes it's just one of the things that people say about clicker training is that you could play ball with him and he can go get the ball down the hall and stuff. Um, but it uses the animal's mind. Yes. And so playing a little game in which you've taught him, in which he has to think. I mean, yep. you can play with cards. Which card? Where's the queen of hearts? You can really play that kind of game. You can teach them. And they have to think. And then 15 minutes of that is worth an hour's walk in terms of the dog needing to relax after that and sleep. Yeah, so they are I, stimulating. And I look at so, it as, as the aging process for ourselves, that if we don't keep our own brain stimulated, then it gets stagnant. And I certainly have seen that in my assistance dogs. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, they, they get old, too, don't they? They get arthritis and so on. But even as they age, though, they still love that stimulation of those, those yeah. games and experiences that definitely keep them young. Oh, mentally. I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, just like it keeps me young mentally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you're young to have to think them up. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. I was just going to ask you about the Pryor Foundation. The Pryor Foundation is a small, very small foundation that has no money. Let me say that up front. And it started, was started by a psychologist and a psychiatrist who were friends of mine who wanted to use the clicker in this kind of principle in bringing these skills into situations that involve human beings, learning, using the, using the dog sometimes to teach human beings how to think in a different way. And so they work with, for example, families at risk, uh, teaching empathy, teaching them to clicker train the, some dogs from the shelter and seeing how that quickly that comes around and then teaching children and parents to clicker train each other, so to speak. They don't use the term clicker training, but they use clicks and rewards to re reinforce people for, for example, smiling at each other. It's a, a, they work also with incarcerated juveniles. There are a number of clicker programs around the country in which the word isn't juvenile, anyway, youth. Mm -hmm. Youth that is <laughs> in prison or in, in confinement, teaching shelter dogs, using these technologies, and at the same time learning themselves how to interact in a different way with other people. Uh, so it's a blurry area, and that's the area that the foundation is dedicated to. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the only part of, our, of my life that's, com well, not the only part, but it's completely nonprofit, and it serves really as a vehicle to bring people together who are doing this kind of work. Yeah. Well, you just have so many facets to what you're doing with your with the books, with the websites, with the Clicker Expo and the other trainings that you do. I mean, there's just so many wonderful opportunities for people to learn how to really enhance their relationship with their animal. And I, I also loved in the book where you said it's a good way to start out with with this clicker training with the cats, which uh -huh. I thought was so awesome because I have four cats. Oh, so I really huh? appreciated that <laughs> <laughs> and really, really liked that. And I mean, Karen, we could talk all day. It's been so wonderful to visit with you. And I hope you'll come back and visit with us again because you're just doing such amazing work and you have so many wonderful stories and experiences and knowledge to share. And I thank you for that. Well, thank you, Marcy. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. And, and, and next time we have to talk about how to teach your cat to give you a high five. <laughs> because that takes about five minutes. The cats love to train people to click. 
Oh. They catch on to it right away, you know. Oh, yeah, I like training people. And they're good at it anyway, you know. <laughs> well, I hope you will do that. And tell us, Karen, one last time for our listeners, how can they get your book, Reaching the Animal Mind, or get more information about Clicker Expo? If you could just tell us really quick how I'll they can do that. Absolutely. The website are clickertraining.com, clickerexpo.com. Karen Pryor Academy for finding a teacher, or you can get there with findagreattrainer.com and Clicker Expo, let's see, and also Click Flicks, which is clickflicks.com is a bunch of wonderful training videos that you can download or stream, and sometimes just little snippets, uh, you know, how do I get my dog to stop jumping on people at the door? Okay, there's a little two-minute video that you can download. Some of them are free. And all of them are reasonable. And uh, and then uh, Clicker Expo. Let's see. Did I forget anything? Oh, Clicker that's Expo. a lot. That's wonderful. That's a start. That's a start. Yeah. And go to YouTube and search for Clicker Training because there are wonderful teachers out there. There are hundreds of them, and they're making videos, and there's an awful lot of free information there for just to get you started. That's great, Karen. Well, thank you so much. And thank you to our listeners for being with us. We really appreciate you joining us. And Whistle and I love getting your questions and comments, so please keep those coming. And as you know, you can email me at marcy, M-A-R-C-I-E, at PetLifeRadio.com. So thanks so much for being with us, and we look forward to being with you again soon. Take good care. Let's Talk Pets. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.